Mmm. That's hot. It's hot coffee. Mmm. It's good hot coffee. Hey, fellas. Well, welcome to another exciting episode here at Prime Model Works headquarters. I'm going to do something a little bit different uh, in this episode. And I'm going to uh, show you this book. This is the FAQ uh, Aircraft Scale Modeling Book by Daniel Zemmer. Zemmer Beatty. That's what his name is down there. Awesome book. Um, one of my favorite books. I've had it for a while. In fact, it's coming apart because I've used it so much. Um, really good for the beginning modeler and the intermediate modeler. And um, I don't know. I, I still look at it and, uh, and get some ideas. Really cool book. In fact, uh, I was browsing through it the other day after I uh, started my... To me, a 148 scale P51 build, and I came across one of his in the book, and inspired me to build this plane. I thought it looked really cool, so I went ahead and did it. <laughs> I didn't have any decals for it, so I had to mask and paint everything. But uh, yeah, I thought it looked really cool, so I masked and painted. Uh, you know. The only decals on this plane are the uh, the decals on the propeller, and that's it. So everything else was painted uh, by me. So I've got this for sale. We'll take a look at this after we uh, we look at the book. But uh, uh, I I, uh, I got this listed for sale on eBay. If anybody wants to buy it, I listed it this morning, and I start mine off at a dollar. Now I only ship inside the United States. It's uh, I don't ship models outside the U.S. because they're so fragile. And I've got a pretty good method of how I ship them, especially with a small plane like this. It's really not that that hard to safely pack and ship it, but I only ship them in the U.S. And shipping is so expensive. My God, I usually get screwed. <laughs> so I've got $20 for shipping. So, you know, if you bid a uh, dollar or, or five bucks and you get it for $25. So um, anyway, uh, I'll leave a, a link for my eBay listing in the description. But uh, let's go ahead and take a look at this book. Alrighty, fellas, here it is. It's called the Aircraft Scale Modeling FAQ Book by Daniel Zimmer Beatty. And you can get this on Amazon. And I think eBay has, Amazon's pretty pricey. It's like a hundred bucks. And um, uh, eBay's anywhere from like 70 to a hundred bucks, plus or minus shipping. So. You know, it's uh, it's not a not an inexpensive book, but if you're new to modeling, you don't have any other modeling books. This is what I consider to be the Bible for newer modelers. It pretty much shows you everything from. Um, we'll just kind of. I'm not going to go through a lot of it, but just to give you an idea of what's in here, basically every, everything. Uh, you know, he shows you the difference, explains the difference between the different types of glues. So if you're like, you know, you're back in the hobby and you're, you were used to using like the tester's tube glue, you know, it kind of explains the difference between extra, to me, extra thin and like a CA glue. Because uh, some people, believe it or not, don't know the difference and they're getting back into it. I didn't when I first started. You know, I thought if it said glue or cement, it was all, you know, glue. But, uh, you know, basically... Everything there is to know, I, I don't think I've found anything in here that uh, that uh, he hasn't shown or at least at least touched on. You know, like things like um, modifying the the flaps and control surfaces to be movable. That's not something that I normally do, um, but uh, you know, he shows you how to do it step by step. The um, different types of like painting processes on radial engines on. Uh, just just about everything different types of paints you know for those of you that uh, are just getting back into it let's well, like I said that's why this is really good for newer guys you know because they don't know the difference between say an acrylic paint and a, and a lacquer paint and you know which one to choose I got set on uh, Tamiya paints Tamiya acrylics and that's pretty much what I've stuck with now a lot of people say there are better paints out there and there may be but uh, I'm so used to Tamiya paints because that's what I started with. And, uh, you know, I, I know how to work with them and I know how they react with things. So the different types of thinners you can use with the different types of paints. Um, it goes over like pre-shading and 
panel lighting. Like I never thought about uh, appreciating a plane, a plane like this, but he shows you know how to do it. Uh, different types of chipping techniques, uh, airbrushing techniques, like how to paint camouflage using like a mask and freehand. Uh, pretty much everything is step by step. And then he goes through, uh, you know, weathering process using watercolor pencils. A lot of people uh, swear by using watercolor pencils. I have never, I've done it. I've done it a few times. I've just never really got the results that, uh, that, that I was after by using them. So that'd be something that, that maybe I should try to work on a little bit more because a lot of people swear by them. Uh, again, there's chipping techniques, different ways to chip. Uh, let's see, kind of just, just go through here real fast. When I was building the Wingnut Wings kits, I built like three or four of them. And I used a lot of his methods when I built those. I just really liked the way it looked. Had to, had to do different, uh, you know, add detail to your instrument panels. Different colors for different cockpits whether you're doing US or like a Japanese, German, you know, and if you just like modeling porn, this is like a big modeling porno. <laughs> it's a, you know, you, just, you could just sit there on the toilet and look at this for hours. Um, just try not to get poop on it. Um, yeah, when I was doing the Wingnut Wings kits, I used this method to make these propellers and uh, it really worked out well. Uh, I really, I don't, the, the wingnut wings kits that I have have like all far, fallen apart because, uh, you know, I moved them a couple times to uh, to clean and uh, they're so fragile. They just kind of just break every time I, I look at them cross-eyed. But yeah, he's got some really, really neat ideas for for creating this uh, specific look. Now his, his um, style is a lot different than mine. I wouldn't say a lot different, <clears throat> but everybody, when you, when you, when you have guys that have been building for a while, they kind of develop their own style. And, you know, my style is a little bit of a mix between, you know, a few YouTubers and, you know, some of some out of this book, but, uh, he has definitely has a different style. And when we get to the end here, I'll show you some of the, um, this is a method that I like to use for the wood grain too. I just think that's really cool to create, uh, to, to make something look like wood that's a piece of plastic. I don't know. I just kind of get off on that. Um, but his style, he runs through different types of camouflage patterns and, you know, kind of a step-by-step -step on just like different types of uh, finishes. on how to paint a heated heated exhaust. I've used this a few times. Um, the checkerboard pattern, I created a YouTube video on, on how to do this and I learned how to do it from, from this book actually. So that's where I learned how to do it. The, um, the how I learned how to do the uh, shark, shark mouth too was from this book. I did it, in fact, the uh, the P fifty one I just did, I basically did it the way he outlines here in his in his uh, in the book, and you do you get a really good result, a lot better than if you use the decals. I think I did a, a video on a P forty where I did this, uh, showed you how I did this as well too. Um, he does go a little bit over uh, like diorama type bases, but he's got a whole separate book. I think it's with him. Yeah, I think that I've got a whole different book on um, dioramas, and it goes a lot more in depth. He just kind of touches touches on it in this book. Uh, but here is some of the the builds that he has done that he kind of showcases. I believe these are all his. You can tell he's got a, a uh, his own distinct style where everything's kind of bold and stylistic. It's not. Uh, it's not like he's focusing on realism. It's it's there's more of an artistic flair to it, which I kind of like. And we'll get to 
mean, that's just really cool. Really cool stuff. We'll get to the P51 when I was strolling through here. That made me want to do that scheme. Which I thought was like super cool. I want to do another one of these F105 Thunder Chiefs. I did a couple in 30 seconds scale and they were like super huge. In fact, I did two at a time for a guy. But uh, I wonder if there's any good 48 scale kits. I'll have to look into that. I don't necessarily want to do another big 30 second scale one, but that's just a cool looking plane. So if I can find a good 48 scale, I might do that. Um, Spitfires, I'm not a big Spitfire fan, to be honest with you. I know the people from uh, across the ocean are gonna be like, Spitfire's the greatest plane ever. <laughs> Let's see, where is it? Oh, here it is. So. Yeah, this is the this is what got me excited about doing that uh, the P fifty one. Now on mine, I did alter the color. He's got this darker blue, and the only original color photo that I saw of the actual plane, um, I guess you could say it might have been that color blue. But all the other like illustrative pictures I've seen of it are with this color of blue. So this is the color that I used. So. That is kind of an overview of the book, just to give you an idea. Obviously, we're not going page by page, but just to give you the idea that's in it. It's a great book. For newer modelers, it is a must-have. Um, really will help you improve your skills. So now that we've covered that, let's go ahead and take a look at this P51. And I am really proud of this. <laughs> uh, I did it kind of more like in his style. I didn't uh, I didn't do any chipping. Let's go ahead and take it off the base here. I didn't do any chipping. I just, uh, I did a lot of kind of like over the top pre-shading, just some really heavy pre-shading and maybe exaggerated some of the, the shading on it. Now <clears throat> I did the, like I said, I did the shark's mouth I paint it just the way he uh, he shows it and the way I showed it in my my P40 video that I made years ago. And it's really not that hard to do. It's just uh, time consuming. I mean, I spent about maybe two and a half days painting this. You know, I, I think what was harder than doing the shark's mouth was getting the uh, the stripes, the, uh, the D-Day invasion stripes just right. Now, <clears throat> from my understanding, uh, a lot of times they would just haphazardly paint these on, but I really didn't wouldn't like the look of that, to be honest with you. So I made them all nice and neat because <laughs> my OCD wouldn't let me make them look messy. So uh, I guess if you're wanting to be like super realistic, you'd probably want to make them look uh, a little gnarly. But uh, there we go. Now, one thing that I want to mention with this kit is this little light right here there's a wingtip light and you can see the clear part on, on there. That's not the clear part that came with the kit. Um, I don't know, I have never had a model kit, no matter how good, that had these stupid clear parts for the wing, the wing, t uh, wing lights that have ever fit right. So what I did was I scrapped the clear part and I filled that with my UV resin. And, uh, you know, if I get another kit like that, I'll show you how I did it. I just filled it with the UV resin and then sanded it down and polished it out. And it really turned out really well. A lot better than messing with that damn clear part that sucks. It never fits right. So, um, closing up the gear bays on this wasn't that big of a deal. The front ones were great. But on this kit, the gear bays, the rear uh, gear bay doors are like molded in an open position. So I had to cut those off. And then I had to just fill it all in and then rescribe some doors. But uh, there we go. I actually did some, uh, now I masked the white part of the eyes on this thing. I masked and painted those white just because painting white onto a colored surface with a brush just never works out. So I airbrushed the white on and then I took a fine brush, paint brush, and then painted in the details like the black outline. It's not perfect, but I think it looks pretty good, I'm being honest. So, 
Uh, there we go. And then I finished the base today. I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do, so I just came up with this grungy, grimy looking base. The P51B Mustang doesn't stand out really well. So if I had to do it all over again, I might have might have changed that. But that is it. So um, like I said, this one is for sale on eBay, and I will post a link in the description. Uh, the auction will end next Friday. So uh, if you're interested, check it out. And uh, hope you enjoyed that, and thanks for watching. And we will start a new project. I promise I will do a uh, build series on the... Uh, P38 Lightning, which I will be starting in a couple days. So, see you then. Here's some pictures.